Hello, welcome back to Exerting with Naomi. And today's tutorial is about greater causality. And in this video or in this tutorial, I will take you through some bits of the theoretical background about greater causality. And then in the next tutorial, I will take you through the step by steps to how to test for greater causality in starter. So when you talk about greater causality, there are three different ways in which we can define greater causality. And the first way is that it is a statistical test that is used to determine if one time series X forecasts another time series Y. And here you should note the term forecast. Because when we talk about greater causality, we do not mean that there is a causal effect. Rather, we mean forecasting whether a time series can forecast another time series. That is, a past value of one time series can forecast the future values of another time series. So another way in which we can define greater causality is that it is a statistical test that is used to test if one time series is useful in forecasting another. Here now we have the term useful because there is a way we can test or we can determine the future values of a time series using its own rugged values. But now when we talk about greater causality is when we include another time series. That is why we use the word useful. Also, we can define greater causality as a statistical test that is used to determine the ability of, of the past values of one time series to predict the future values of another time series. So the way to state the null hypothesis for greater causality is that one, we can state it as no greater causality, or we can say that the rugged values of x does not greater cause y. So that is how we state the null hypothesis. Now, when you come to concluding the presence or absence of greater causality, we can conclude greater causality if the rugged values of time series X provide statistical significant information about future values of time series Y. We can also conclude greater causality if the pro predictions of future values of Y are better when both the lagged values of X and its own lagged values are included in the model than when we only include the values or the lagged values of the or, or when we include only the lagged values of the time series y. So that is why what I was trying to explain when you talk about useful. If we predict the future values of y using its own lagged values and the lagged values of another time series x is it going to give us better predictions than when we only included the lag values of, of y? So if it, if it gives us a better prediction, then we can conclude greater causality. Now there are, there are five steps of testing for greater causality. And the first step is to specify your model. And this is where now you find the proper lag values to include in your model. The next step is to test for stationarity. This is because greater causality assumes stationarity. And if your time series are not, are not stationary, then you need to difference them in order to get a stationary value. The third step is to determine the optimal lag. And then that is, we, we, Determine the optimal lag by using the vessel command. The next step is to perform a valve analysis or a t-test. And this is where now we determine if there are lags of, of time series X that are individually statistically significant. We determine if there are any lags of the time series X that are individually 
statistically significant. Now, if you find that there are some lags that are statistically significant, then we are going to perform an F test. And this is where now we want to see if the lags that were individually statistically significant, if put together, are they able to provide uh, an explanatory power to the model? So, in an F test, we can find a significant or an insignificant value. If now we get a significant value, we are now able to, to conclude greater causality. But if the F test provides an insignificant value, then we will conclude that there is no greater causality or the time series X does not greater cause time series Y. So that is it for a bit of the theoretical background about greater causality. And in the next tutorial, I'll take you through the step-by-steps of how to test for greater causality in Stata. And I hope that you find this information to be useful. And if that is so, please like this video, share it, and also do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you.